Hello, and welcome to episode two of the Broken Bridge Studio channel, looking at uh, wood turning. Welcome back. I'm uh, showing today some tools and some upgrades, especially to the, uh, the original lathe and uh, some other stuff. But uh, first and foremost here, I'm going to have to go get some of my safety gear on. So let me go and show you this. This is a basic face shield and a, a great little apron set. Pick these both up on Amazon.com. This is a Uvex face shield. That was a canvas waxed apron. Just basic protection is always important when to wood turning. So you see I have it on now, and let's talk a little bit about this machine. Now, it came with some really great intro parts, and I showed all those off. For instance, this live end right here, it's good. Nothing wrong with it, MT1 taper, but it doesn't spin freely. It doesn't spin the way that you would expect it to really spin on a true ball bearing. If you're familiar with a fidget spinner, it's kind of like that. Well, I decided to upgrade this, and I went ahead and found this online, right here. This is a heavy-duty MT1 live end uh, with that MT1 spindle, uh, designed perfectly to fit into this machine, and you can see it just spins beautifully. So I'm going to go ahead and slide it right here into the tailstock, and you'll see it just fits perfectly. I hit it with my finger, and it just rolls expertly. So I really like this live end for what it can do and what it can help me with. Um, another big thing that I was thinking about improving on is that because this tailstock can move in and out, I really wanted to consider probably changing it out and putting a chuck in here occasionally, like if I needed to drill something out. So here's an example of that. So this chuck comes pre-installed with the MT1 taper on it. As you can see right there, it fits perfectly into the tailstock, locks right in, it allows it to go in and out using that live end, uh, sorry, the tailstock turner. And I can lock in drill bits and other accessories too if I needed to drill holes into the uh, wood stock that I'm working on. Now, take that key, open and close the stock, or open and close that chuck just like normal, and it's pretty straightforward. Probably going to have to use the knockout tool here to get it out. There you go. Nice solid fit and a beautiful turn, and of course that's the knockout tool that came with the lathe itself. Another thing that I upgraded, uh, we'll go ahead and pop that heavy-duty live end back in there. The next thing I really thought about upgrading was the chuck itself. And this is going to be for the headstock. This is actually a Nova chuck. And the idea here is that you take this tool, it comes supplied with the chuck, you turn it, and there's a gear inside that opens and closes these jaws simultaneously. And this is really great. So when it opens up like that, those jaws can either grip the inside base like that, or it can spread open into the base of an existing pot or vase. Plus, you could also wedge something inside those jaws and clamp it down. So it's got to work both ways. And, uh, of course, that's a nice tool. And the interesting thing about these chucks is that it does come as a standard size, and that nut there that you see is an insert. So that insert is specifically purchased for your lathe. Now, I needed an 8 TPI insert to fit that Nova chuck. It just happened that that was a pretty common one. It was available on Amazon. So once it's installed and locked into place on that chuck using a little worm screw, and then it locks onto the spindle perfectly because of that 8, and 8 TPI uh, threading on my uh, lathe, then the chuck just sits on there perfectly, nice and tight, spins up and just really really performs nicely. So it gets right up to speed, has no wobble, has no issues, powers down very very efficiently because it's quite heavy uh, and really has a great idea. It's a great way to hold on to the gear. Pop it off just like normal and that frees that spindle back up if you want to put the faceplate back on or throw the mandrel in there. Now you notice there's some numbers here. One, two, three, back to four. Those actually correspond to numbers that are on the underside of these face plates here. Now those holes right there, the, the keys, uh, they're, they're designed to come off. And what I did, I made the mistake of not looking at the instructions and just throwing this thing together, and yeah, I put them on the wrong spots. One does have to go with one, two has to go with two, so on and so forth. Also included with the Novichuk was this Woodward screw. Uh, so you can see it's got a really deep shank. It's all metal construction. Uh, it seems to be drop forged, so it seems really, really heavy and sturdy. And the idea with this is that it goes into this Nova chuck, clamps directly in there, 
uh, and you'll notice it's got some flat parts to it. So those flat parts actually sit at those cross intersections. And uh, the idea here is that if you can work this directly into a piece of wood stock, then this can clamp into the Nova. Ideally, this would be something like a bowl, and that would be the section of the bowl that you'd be ending up hollowing out. You'd start by uh, creating the tail uh, of the bowl, hollowing out the tail so that it could then later fit onto the Nova chuck itself, um, and then basically uh, remove that woodworm screw and uh, and then keep going. So you don't ever have to demount the Nova chuck directly from the lathe if you have to, uh, if you choose to, which is a nice little feature. All right. Well, anyway, that's a good review of some of the accessories that I had. I've also worked up a little dust collection port back here, but I might move that around to see if I can find a better spot for it. Also, I picked up a nice set of calipers. These are also from Amazon.com. Calipers are coming in very handy in wood turning because they'll allow you to maintain a uniform distance, uniform thickness across the piece of the wood that you're turning. Uh, you set that to a specific size or go off of reference material, and then you can always come back and hit the perfectly. So, with all these tools together, I think that was a good way to start. Here's an example of some of the chisels I picked up. These are from PSI Woodworking. It's a set of eight chisels. As you can see here, it's a variety of different gouges, bowl gouges, um, some scrapers, a spindle gouge, two skews, uh, a parter, and then, of course, the parting tool. And these are really nice. These are some good chisels. They seem to be performing very well. They did have a little bit of some coating on them, but uh, I'm getting that off. And, of course, a nice little hand, uh, hand handmade box there as well. So also I wanted to show you some other tools that are useful in woodworking and the wood turning world. This is a corner finder or center finder. So the center finder is basically a piece of plastic. On this side a 90 degree turn, on this side a 60 degree turn. And the idea here is you can press this into various pieces of wood stock and as you use that center line right there with the pencil, draw through the center, pick this up, turn it 90 degrees, draw the center line again, and that is actually going to find the perfect center to that stock. So get example here, a nice little six inch piece of some yellow heart uh, hardwood that I picked up at uh, Woodcraft. So that's exactly where the center is. Now I actually marked this on the other side already and created the circle of where I think I'd want to cut out the bowl pattern. And I did that utilizing this. And this is the Turner tool. It's a center finder as well as a uh, circular marker. Um, so with this type of stock, it's really easy. You take that little nail, which is not included, just have to have a nail, put it directly into that center that you created, and as you start turning these lines, you're going to see what the center is of the piece you're working on. Now for a square piece of perfectly hewn wood, this is not a huge problem, but let's say you had like a stump or some live edge wood, this would be something really useful to say, okay, this is definitely the size of the circle, this is the size of the area that I can get out of this stock and, uh, and know what size you're working for. So right there I'm drawing a very easy 6 inch circle, I want to say this, uh, this disc goes all the way up to 10 inches. So it's a really handy little tool, just plastic, um, it had little half inch increments right there, and it does a nice job. Now you'll notice I also marked the edges here at 45 degree angles. I'm probably going to use my chop saw, take these corners off, and I'll address that later on in another video. So again, the center finder, and the turner tool, and that always comes in handy. Another thing you might want to find if you're getting into wood turning a center punch, it just helps you mark those centers once you do have them identified so that you can start to bite in. And these, this is very important, these are going to be sheet metal screws. Now these just happen to be self-drilling, you can use any sheet metal screw. These are specifically for when you are affixing the wood directly to the face plate. Now, sheet metal screws are important because they will resist the shearing forces. Normal wood screws, they won't do that. Um, so keep that in mind. Now, this is Crystal Coat. This is HUT Crystal Coat. This is a great little finisher. It's a very, very easy to apply. Shake it up. It has that kind of milky appearance, and it just brings out a beautiful shine to the wood. This little piece I turned when I first got the lathe. Applied that clear coat to it, and it's just really, really pretty. Nice, gentle, um, very kind of beautiful shine. Also have a couple things of different wood glue, epoxies. I really like the Gorilla Glue brand. Gorilla Glue brand. Wow, that's hard to say. Say that a couple times yourself. 
And uh, of course, then there's also the different colors of Gorilla Glue, both the brown and the clear, as well as the super glue, super glue gel. Oh, I can't talk today. So anyway, those are always going to come in handy, especially the epoxy, because every so often you might have to affix a sacrificial piece of wood to something that you're turning, especially if you are really concerned about the thinness of a piece or if you're working on a spindle. So attaching a piece with epoxy is going to hold that on there and give you a little bit more working surface. All right. So anyway, that's going to be a piece of wood that we'll talk about more in the future. I also wanted to show you these sanding uh, rolls. So this is a multi-pack of sanding rolls that I also picked up on Amazon. This is specifically from Rockler Woodworking. And this has five different grits, 150 all the way up to 600. And this is really great. They're one inch widths and it's really easy to take a strip of these and as the piece is on the lathe, uh, start sanding it down. The chisels will get you to a very good shape, but you're going to have to sand down your work. And ideally, you don't end at the 600. You really want to go further than that, and that's where these come in handy. So if I can peel these apart, boy, they really stick together. These are micro mesh. I also found these on Amazon, but these are also through a lot of different woodworking sites. Now, these micro mesh, they're going to start at about, I want to say they started a little about 800 grit. That's that brown one right there, and it goes up to this crazy high grit. And uh, they're fantastic. I've really used these a couple times already. So there we go, 1,500, I apologize, to up to 12,000. So 1,500 to 12,000 grit, and that 12,000 grit, it almost feels just like uh, suede, honestly. And it just puts a beautiful shine onto the pieces. And uh, there we go. Thanks for watching.